So in this video, we are gonna talk about some common mistakes that we have seen people make. Now we've been on the road for just over five years now and in hundreds of campsites and campgrounds, we've seen some pretty big doozies. We want to help you avoid those same mistakes because you don't want a stressful camping trip. So let's get started with number one. All right, so the first mistake that a lot of people make, in fact, we've made it ourselves, is not reading the campground rules and regulations. Now, there's a lot of important information that's there. Things like quiet hours, other important things to know. Probably the biggest mistake where we didn't read the rules. Buddha. <laughs> definitely say I've never had this happen before. Been at campgrounds that had, you know, different breed restrictions and didn't allow certain type of pets, but never been to a campground where they did not allow pets. So I'm gonna take him outside the campground to go to the bathroom. We're gonna go potty and, and then I'm gonna bring him back. Come on, dad, I need a pee. We ended up at a campground that didn't allow pets with our dog, pretty big mistake. So mistake number two that a ton of RVers make, both new and old, is when parking in the campsite, not properly positioning your RV in that campsite. And not properly positioning can lead to things like difficulty reaching the hookups, you're encroaching on your neighbor's campsite, or there's something else that it can lead to, which is a little bit later in this video. All right, so mistake number three that a lot of people make is failing to properly level their RV at a campsite. Now this can lead to all sorts of issues. Probably the biggest one is if your RV is not properly level, your fridge cooling can be affected as far as if it can properly cool or not. The other thing too is just comfort. You don't wanna be rolling out of bed in the middle of the night or feel like you're sliding off of your bed. I don't think the RV is level. I keep rolling over it's just like this is getting ridiculous oh. oh oh so this is where we love using the level mate pro is we're actually positioning our rv we can see if maybe one part of that campsite is more level towards the front or at the back of the campsite so it decreases the need for the use of the levelers and then we can use our levelers more as stabilizers versus actually trying to use them to keep the rv level So the next huge mistake that we have seen a ton of RVers make, and when I say a ton, like literally almost every single time that we go to a campground, we see somebody making this huge mistake. And this is really a safety issue, honestly, when it comes down to it. But that is especially on motorized RVs. The sites are very unlevel, at least the site we're in. It's like sloped. When they level it out, maybe the campsite's really unlevel and wheels are off of the ground. There's no way this RV's gonna get 100% level. So we're the just gonna... rear wheels are off the ground actually, so. You never wanna have your wheels off of the ground for lots of different reasons, safety being one of them. So if you're ever in a situation where for some reason, the only way to get your RV to a comfortable place when it's level means having a wheel off of the ground, you wanna be able to put something underneath that so it's not just in the air, but it's actually resting on something solid. So whether you need to put blocks or something underneath it, don't have your wheels up in the air. All right, so now mistake number five that a ton of people make is actually not considering the clearance you need for things like RV slide outs. Now, we actually had this happen at a campground where we really didn't take into consideration what we needed for clearance once that our RV had dropped down off of the air suspension and we had a really close miss. So after you've got your RV in the campsite, it's positioned, you wanna make sure that you've got the clearance you need before you start putting those slides out. So now mistake number six is actually a mistake we made very early on. I'm kind of like ashamed to admit that, but that is not using one of these surge protectors for electrical hookups. Campground electricity can actually be very unstable and you wanna make sure your RV is protected. So do yourself a favor, invest in a good surge protector. We'll have a link below for the one we like. 
So the next mistake that we see a lot of people make is actually improper sewer hookups and connections. Now, here's where things can go really, really wrong, really, really fast if you don't have those connections secure and properly installed. And the last thing that you want to have on your camping trip is a poopsie. Trust me, it's stressful. So now push down on that and then, yep. Now, speaking of these sewer connections, this is where we love using the products from our friends over at Unique Camping and Marine, which is the sponsor of this video. Now, the last thing you wanna struggle with on your camping trip, black tank smells, clogged black tanks, all of the above. And that is why we love using the RV Digest It Plus because just one pod is all that it takes to help keep our black tank clean, smell free, and prevent any sort of buildup at all. So we have partnered with Unique for a 15% off discount for our viewers. It'll be in the description below. And a huge thanks to Unique Camping and Marine for their continued support of our channel and sponsoring this video. Now the next mistake a lot of people make is actually not either checking what the water pressure is at the water spigot or using a water pressure regulator. So you can do this a couple of different ways. You can invest in just one of the tools that will let you know what the water pressure is, but if it's high, you just need a water pressure regulator anyway. So what we actually use is an adjustable water pressure regulator. We can adjust the pressure to what we want it, which is what I really like because while you don't want too high of pressure to cause potential flooding and damage in your RV, you also don't want super low water pressure either. So now number nine is a huge mistake. <laughs> And you'll have to let us know if you've actually seen somebody make this mistake, but that is actually forgetting to disconnect before departure. Now, I think we've all probably seen that time where people forget to pull the gas pump out of their car before they leave. It happens all the time. People drive off from gas stations forgetting the nozzle and part of the hose are still attached to their gas tank. It's kind of like that, except for this would be an even bigger mistake. So before you depart, do a quick little walk around your RV, make sure that everything is disconnected and ready to go before you pull out of the campsite. So number 10, huge mistake that we see people make is neglecting campsite cleanliness and also campground etiquette. So don't think that your fire pit is actually a burn pit. It's not designed to burn trash, it's designed for a campfire. When you go to check out, double check that there's nothing that is unburned in that fire pit that is trash. Nobody wants to pull into that campsite after you and have a bunch of trash in the fire pit. Don't trash your campsite, don't throw trash in your fire pit. There's actually also a lot of other things that you should know regarding campground etiquette, some unspoken rules, so to speak, and I'm gonna leave those right up here. If we don't see you out on the road or around the campground, we'll catch you in the next video.